Here we have the Cinelog 30B3 that I'm going to install the O4 and at the same time I'm going to be using this video to show you how things are inside this drone and how can you repair it in case that you need it. Let's start by opening this one. It's quite easy to open using this screw here. And you have these two and you have these two here. careful here because you have the cable for the LED you don't want to break that one when removing the screw this connector here is the LED and you have to disconnect it before opening So this drone has something in particular that some brands have started to do, which is to add this auxiliary board here that is going to help you move the USB to the back, for example, here, you see it? So it's easy to access and it's also giving you this button that is going to be like if you need to reboot the, the board, like when you need to enter the uh, FU mode, you can push directly here without having to open the drone, which is pretty good, but at the same time it's adding one extra layer of error. This is not a dumb board, it has some electronic you can see here, and basically this electronic what it's doing is to take the power from the battery here and uh, transform it or reduce it to 5 volts and I think, and what it's a little bit Let's say it's not annoying, but it's like you have to think about it. Is that if you are using a crossfire or a SpectreLRS, the receiver is mounted directly to this board and it's soldered by soldering all the pins. You see here, all these four pins here are the receiver, which means that you don't, you can't change the receiver easily. You have to dismount this board and then desolder the four of them, these four pins at the same time to be able to remove the express RS or crossfire. This has made one thing, like when a customer has called me to remove the express RS because they want to use DJI, for example, the DJI remote, uh, I don't remove the receiver itself. What I do is that I remove the connector from the controller to that uh, receiver, which is this cable that you see here. And it goes to a connector that is down here. This connector here, this is for the receiver. So if you disconnect this one, the receiver is going to stay here and it's even gonna get power and everything, but it's not going to be doing anything on the drone and then you can connect your all four cables and use your uh, DJI radio. Similarly this connector here it's coming from the all-in-one controller and you can see here that you have 5 volts, boot and some other connections. This, um, this one is basically the one that is making this USB to work and it's making the LED to work as well. So those things are connected to the all-in-one through this cable. So if everything that we want to do is just to connect the O4 into this drone, it's actually quite easy because number one, you have to connect the camera in here, which is not a difficult thing to do at all. And then the air unit is gonna be mounted here. And you just have to pay attention to these openings that you have um, on both sides of the, of the frame. So you have the, the VTX mounted in a way that the holes can be, or the port can be accessed by those holes. It's the only thing that you have to pay attention when mounting this. 
because of the shape and because of this board and the way that they are doing the, with this drone, the antennas, they don't feed directly, uh, they don't have enough cable directly like they are, like this. So we have to have an extension that hopefully is in the box. These are the extensions for the antenna. We have to connect it properly and Gepersi likes to have a shrink tube on, on the connection to the antenna in here to avoid any kind of short circuit or anything. Make it look a little bit better. This is the back, remember? The antennas go to the back. I'm not sure which size I need to, but I'm gonna start with six and see if it's enough. See, as I was mentioning in the beginning, I have access here to the USB port and to the SD card on this other side. This cable that comes already pre-installed in the drone is the one that is going to go to the air to the air unit. Uh, so this is interesting because this is an express solaris drone i don't need the you the since this is an express solaris drone i don't need the s bus and normally uh gepard c has conflict between the express solaris and the s bus which means that i need to remove the cables these two last cable the green and the gray from this cable if i want this drone to work correctly I'm kind of surprised that KPRC give the cable like this because they know that the drone is Express LRS so they should give you the cable without these two. There is an elegant way to do this which is to remove the, the cables carefully like this. And then there is a way that you just cut the cable. It's much quicker but it's not that elegant. So again, these two cables are the U, the S bus cables that will be used if you were doing, if we, you were using the DJI remote control. Since we're not using that because we have an Express LRS in this drone, then we don't need these and we remove them so they don't create any kind of conflict with the Express LRS receiver. This black thing, oh, let's see if I can show it. This black thing here helps keep the cable in place. Um, first time that I see it, but it works pretty well.
I don't like this cable going around so I'm gonna Just make sure that no cable is gonna be uh, in the way of the propeller. These antenna cables are a little bit weird and the camera cable also have to be taken into consideration. Lastly, we have to reconnect this uh, LED cable. There you got it. So again, be careful with the cables, the antenna cables. I think I could have done a better job with this one here to get it inside the frame. So you're not gonna get it in the propeller and break your antenna. And the camera cable, this one here also have to be down so you don't get it in the propeller let's move to the configuration of this drone now uh, there is nothing really special here to do it comes pre-configured from GPRC but I like to check anyway that things are the way that they should be like for example the UART 1 having the MSP for the video that's fine uh, and then I don't know why all this uh, beeper configuration comes on like I just turn off most of it this drone doesn't have a beeper so it doesn't really affect this but anyway I'm going to remove this just because I don't like to have something that I'm not using I know my configuration for my radio is not standard so I changed that directly as well this is something that I know by heart at this point but this is the important thing right like this drone it's uh, Express LRS so you have to make sure that you have it in the in the serial UART and the crossfire something interesting here is that they started to add in the crossfire the SBOS configuration as well this is done on the when you are building the software which they didn't do before and if you wanted to change to DJI radio it was making things a little bit more complicated but since now it's both of them in there it will the change will be easy if you want to do it for the modes I'm just gonna add my pre-arm it's always a good practice to have pre-arm so you avoid accidents in the future I again I know my things by heart so I know it's in the auxiliary 5 and that's it on the modes for me the OSD is something that is very particular to each person I try to have as clean as possible to enjoy my fly so I remove things that I'm not interested that it's not going to be necessary for me to fly and I just rearrange things around a little bit to make it nice for me Last part is to configure ExpressLRS. This is something that I love from ExpressLRS. I just need to add my binding phrase safe and I'm done with it. Nothing else. There you have it. This is the Cinelog 30 V3 with the O4 install. The installation was quite easy, nothing particular complicated. I show you around a little bit inside so you understand the parts if you need to fix something and I show you how the connections are to understand what you have in your drone and you can do changes, modifications or repairs in the future. Of course we have to test fly the drone before finishing this video and here we go. My first reaction to this is that it was very powerful. I was using a very small battery because it was the only thing that I have at hand, 650 mAh which might be too small for this drone and therefore 
the weight of the drone was very low but uh, again like it responds very nicely uh, you see the video is stable and, and nice and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a drone that a lot of people it's gonna like for this kind of FPV shots that they want to do with their um, more generic videos or insert in any other kind of videos with your FPVs to do these kind of shots. Very nice drone, very stable, liking it a lot. Thank you for watching and see you soon.